On today's uh, episode of uh, To My Way of Thinking, where we talk with the tree shakers and policy makers and those who would make our world a better place, we have jo Joyce Morgan Danford. She is currently a city council member, uh, District 10, uh, across the District river. District 1. District 1. I had one in my mind and still 10 came out of my mouth. It's District 1, uh, Arlington District, as it, as it is known. Um, and uh, she's uh, completing her second term on the council. And we're going to talk to her about her experiences, obviously, on the council and, and a bit about what next. Thank you for joining us today, Joyce. Oh, absolutely, Fred. And thank you for having me. All right. Well, let's get right to it. What's the state of our city? What's the state of our city? I think that's uh, according to who you asked. It really is. And uh, for me as a city council member, I think we're in a in a good situation in many ways, but certainly when it comes to social issues, um, we're failing. You know, we, we, we absolutely get a failing grade there. There are so many opportunities for us to get it right. But um, with all of the influence from the state and, and our governor, um, it really starts trickling back down to us. And uh, we as lawmakers really have to kind of look at that and realize that we have to make the decisions that are right for our people right here in Jacksonville. And that might look a little different from other parts of the state. And so um, social issues, uh, you know, when we're talking about 50 years, 55 years of consolidation, and uh, we're still seeing some of the same things uh, in Northwest Jacksonville that we did 50 years ago. Um, we move a couple of steps forward and we still fall back. So it is definitely who you ask, because when you look at uh, some of the stuff that the chamber says, it looks all rosy. It looks absolutely rosy. But when you look at some of the things that our, our citizens are facing, then um, you see something totally different. So it's according to who you ask on what day, Fred. I think you partially answered this question already, but let's take a little deeper dive into it. What are some of the takeaways that you have uh, gotten from your uh, last uh, seven and, and three quarter years on the on the city council of Jacksonville? Well, thank <laughs> Thanks for asking that question. I've learned an awful lot. And, you know, being in the news business, I thought I had pretty much seen seen it all. But um, you learn so much as a city council member and the inner workings that we get to see are totally different from what the public gets to see. Um, the public doesn't get to see all of the committee work that we have to go through, um, all of the different facets that we have to contend with. It's not just finance. It's not just transportation, energy, and utilities. It's not just the neighborhoods. Um, it, it is everything in this city of Jacksonville. And that's what makes being a city council member so important. And that's why, that's why people have to know who you're voting for and why you're voting for them, because they have a tremendous task to do on the citizen's behalf, on the citizen's behalf. And so for me, I took that very seriously. As a, as a city council member. And all I wanted to do was make Arlington better than when I came into office. And, and that's what I just proceeded to do very methodically, step by step by step, engaging my community every month, a, a town hall meeting, which is basically unheard of in the city of Jacksonville, especially a town hall meeting where you have more than 50 people show up. So I embarked on that in 2015 of September, and I have never stopped it. I'm doing it to this day. I have my next meeting coming up on um, the 27th of February. So uh, that's the deep dive in, in what it is and what we do and why it's so important for people to um, engage, just engage. 
How have you been able to stay awake during the endless hours of public hearings that the city council has? You've got the the uh, at the top of the of the city council meet, meetings, you've got the uh, you've got at least an hour and a half or so mm -hmm. of public to come up and talk about any issue that's on your mind. Then mm -hmm. for the zoning uh, committee, for the zoning issues that are facing the council, you've got another set of, uh, of public hearings that may take place depending upon how controversial the rezoning uh, or zoning may be. And of course, you've got bills that I think you call mm -hmm. them second reading that come up mm -hmm. in the public uh, who has interest in a particular bill can come and speak to that. Uh, you've had meetings that have run well into one o'clock um, or so in the morning. What's your secret to staying aware and appearing to be as attentive as you can be, especially issues who, that don't necessarily concern you? Well, all issues concern me. I will tell you that. And the reason they all concern me is that even though I was elected by the constituents of District 1, I served this whole city. All of us serve the whole city because it takes 10 votes to move any action. No bill can be passed without 10 votes. And so when a constituent comes up, for me, again, because I hold town hall meetings every month, I am actively seeking what is going on in their lives because everybody has, again, Everybody has a different take on Jacksonville and what kind of city we are. But these are our constituents. This is our time to listen to them and hopefully help them with some of the issues that they are facing. Um, so I guess it's it's my time as a news anchor. It, it's it's just my time as, you know, really, really think about it, being a mom and needing to listen to your children. It's it's all of those things rolled up into one. And so when people are talking, I want to hear them. Sometimes I am actually writing down what they're saying. I'm writing down their name so that if I need to refer back to that, I have that available right there, you know? So that's how I listen. And I listen because number one, it's important to me. And that's why I'm a city council member, Fred, is because I was supposed to be here to listen, take the concerns of our constituents and try to help them move forward. You represent one of the most, uh, I would say one of the most diverse council districts in the county. African immigrants are there, uh, and from that diaspora, Ethiopian in immigrants and Nigerian immigrants. Uh, you have uh, first persons who originate from the Caribbean, uh, who have businesses that they've set up in Arlington, long standing now. I mean, it's one of the few places you can travel around the city, and you you can you can go to an African supermarket uh, if you mm -hmm. want to check out what's going on. Um, how have you been able to navigate that? Uh, that diversity, along, of course, with the longstanding African-American population and, 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 and Caucasian population that has been there for quite some time. What's, how have you been able to navigate that? And what's been the feedback that you've gotten from those diverse populations that uh, inhabit Arlington? I've been able to navigate it, I believe, Fred, uh, because of all the same things that I've told you about one of the things that I may not talk about a lot is my diverse background. I come from a military family. My father was career army. So my two brothers and sister and I traveled everywhere. My father was stationed. So my, my father and mother are from Louisiana but he was stationed in Oklahoma. He was stationed in Alabama. He was stationed overseas in Bad Kreuznach, Germany, and he retired at Fort Benning, Georgia. So I have, uh, I, I've been around the world, uh, just very diverse. And I believe that when I encounter people, I encounter them exactly where they are. I don't try to make you anything. I don't try to, put you in a, um, a, a little 
box so that I can manage you. I accept you just like you were presented to me. And because I've done that in all facets of Arlington, I literally have had no problem. In fact, I've thrived and I thrive because I empower everyone who comes in contact with me to thrive as well. In other words, I'm not trying to do this all for Joyce. This is about our community, whether I, when I was PTA president or whether when I was over Relay for Life or uh, the Diabetes Association, really doesn't matter what organization that I'm giving my, my time to. Um, it is the people. It, it's always been the people. It will always be the people for me. And uh, that's how I move through different communities with no problem. And, and again, uh, it's usually very, very positive. Very, mm -hmm. very positive. Mm -hmm. Crime is a big issue all over the county. In your district um, in 2021, 2022 in particular, at least uh, publicity-wise, there were a great deal. There was a lot of gun violence going on there, and I perceive, perceive uh, possibly some of it gang generated. What do you What do you think has been the biggest generator of uh, of crime in uh, in Arlington District One? Well, I think it's what everybody else has already talked about. I will tell you, I'm no expert on on crime, and and um, I leave that bit of it to the crime fighters, mm -hmm. but um, I will tell you that as I walk my district, either when we do district walks with police or district walks with fire, um, or just when we're just out, what I see sometimes is hopelessness. Uh, there, there are so many people that just don't see hope in the same way that maybe you would see it or I would see it. I never think that there is a time when we can give up on hope. So that's why in Arlington, um, you might see pockets where there is going to be a lot of violence. But violence, I find, is everywhere. I find it in some of the wealthiest neighborhoods, and I find it in some of the poorest neighborhoods. It has to do with people. Again, to me, it goes back to people, where people are in their lives. You can be hopeless and have a million dollars. You can be hopeless and have just a few dollars. So a lot comes from within, comes from our family, how our family reacts to things. And so the social services that are provided throughout our community, those social services are really, really needed. I just talked to someone from United Way and he told me, he said, you know, I don't think we've been doing as much as I would like to do in the Arlington area. And, um, you know, he said, I'm going to I'm going to be centering on your area and your district. And I said, come on, you know, the more the merrier. Bring those resources to me because we need them and our people need them so that they don't feel hopeless and they don't feel like there's no way out. There is a way out. And, and I know that way. One of several elephants in the room for city council persons these days. And again, I don't think you have one in your district that I'm aware of that's as significant as the one in Springfield, but there is the issue of Confederate monuments. Right. Um, what are we going to do? What's the council going to do? I've heard the council president say he's going to have, he's going to take some action on it in, in these, uh, over these next uh, few months, but nothing specific. There have been proposals for it. The mayor has taken down the one, obviously, that was in the former Hemming Plaza, now the James Weldon Johnson uh, Plaza. And of course, um, uh, councilman, one of the councilmen, Matt Carlucci, has proposed uh, allocating, uh, I think, about a half million dollars to take down another uh, and store it somewhere. He's not uh, crazy about um, recontextualizing it. 
what to, what what's going to happen? What what do you feel should happen on the issue of Confederate monuments here in Duval County? Well, we're in the minority on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of us keep voting to take them down, move them, put them somewhere else. But we don't have the traction. We don't have the numbers. Again, I think if you're concerned about issues just like this, then you have to go to the polls. That's the only way you change this. Are they going to be willing? Are they going to be? Is there any will on the city council then to put it up to put it up for a referendum? Again, I don't think we have the votes. Really, <laughs> we haven't had Fred. We haven't had the votes on this one from the start. You know, we we tried. It the will is not there, and it has to be. To me, the will of the people, the people have to speak. This is truly the issue that they want. And if it's truly the issue that they want these monuments down, then um, somebody's got to be standing behind the few that keep voting to take them down. Mm -hmm. We keep voting, but we don't have enough votes. So <laughs> it, it's going to stay where it is un unless the dynamics change on city council mm. and we have a, an opportunity to do that march 21st you have um got a majority republican uh, a, a republican majority on the city council um, that is correct and um you know it's it's rather historic a lot of folks don't think about it, but I think because it has been on the camera, we've had we've had successive African American Republican leaders, uh, two African American who happen to be Republicans serving consecutively mm -hmm. as the city council presidents. Mm -hmm. um, and you're telling me that we still don't have any kind of sensitivity among those let's take those two gentlemen in particular on this thing so that we can at least assuming that we got at least five other votes uh, we don't have any sensitivity uh, to get at least to 10 uh with 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 that we haven't had it and and all you got to do is check the record the, the record speaks for itself you you, you don't have, you really don't even have to ask me or anybody else the record speaks for itself it doesn't matter who the city council president is the record speaks for itself and we have not had the votes Hmm. What's the major budget item that you are have been looking at uh, in this coming budget that's come up? I mean, you won't get a chance to vote on it, maybe, but no. over the last couple of years, what's been the major budget items that you've been keeping an eye on? Well, I, I would say when I first came in, of course, the major budget item had to be um, the pension and, uh, you know, dealing with the pension and getting some kind of plan to hopefully take us through this pension crisis. Um, it's certainly been alleviated. And now, you know, in, in the coming years, uh, we should have that taken care of. Uh, quality of life issues, the, um, um, I, I can't believe, I can't remember the septic tanks. Uh, septic tanks have been a major issue over, over the whole eight years that I have been here, quality of life issues, whether it's homelessness, affordable housing, and whether for me, it's parks. Jacksonville has the largest park system in the entire nation with more than 400 and some odd parks. In District 1 alone, I have 25 parks, and most of those parks are rather large on the large side. I do have pocket parks. I do have some passive parks but a lot of my parks are active where there's soccer, where there's football, where there's baseball. So I have, I have a lot going on. So I do spend a lot of time um, talking about parks, talking about recreation, talking about those quality of life issues for our entire families. So those are the issues that have kind of impacted me most, um, 
over my eight years. What's next for Joyce Morgan Danford? What is next for me is the property appraiser's office. As, as you know, with city council, as I was saying earlier, we serve as liaisons and uh, board members for so many aspects of the city that people really just don't see. So one of the things people might not have ever seen or ever known is that for three years, I served on the value adjustment board for the city council for the city of Jacksonville. And in that role, I dealt for three years directly with our property appraiser, with constituents who had issues about their their taxes, the amount of taxes that they were paying. And if they uh, decided to contest that, then the value adjustment board was the board that kind of looked at that, made those decisions, and went through a magistrate and it would come back. And so for three years, I did that. For two of the years, I was actually the chair of the value adjustment board. And that's when I really saw that there were so many parts of our city that we never look at. We do look at the mayor's race. We do look at the sheriff's race. We do look at all of the city council races, but what we don't pay attention to is some of the constitutional offices. And the property appraiser's office is one of those offices that really hasn't been taken. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of been taken for granted almost. Is that you know you run for that and and you get that, and sometimes when you get in the in the in the voting booth, uh, you might not know that name who's even on the list for property appraiser. So you just take a guess. Well, in this year, Fred, you won't have to guess. You will know this name. This name is a name that's been around here since 1988. I've done everything in this community. I've learned. I continue to learn. I'm a lifelong learner. In fact, I'm in the executive master's program at Jacksonville University right now under Rick Mullaney. So it, it's uh, continuous. And that's the kind of person we need in that office. Jerry Holland's done a good job, but he can't run again. So we have three people who are running for that spot. And I am one. I am the the only female to have ever run for this spot. I am the only African-American to ever have even run for this office, let alone on March 21st. Hopefully we're going to say I am in the office. Now, this office, I'm presuming like the others on the uh, on the March primary uh, is not a party based uh, uh, in terms of running, it's it, it is the the person the, the person who ach achieves fifty percent plus one. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, that and, is correct. It's a so, unitary election. Mm -hmm. So the top two vote getters, if no one reaches that, the top two vote getters will go to the general election and duke it out there. What what do you do? I mean, yes, you do have name recognition. There's no question in my mind about that. Um, and uh, but uh, but there is still the issue of um, of overcoming this tendency in Duval <laughs> County over the last uh, two election cycles to vote Republican first to look for what's behind it. What are you doing to kind of overcome that that hurdle? Because the, the Democrats hold the, the registered voting majority, but they have not been voting for Democrats in, in most of the constitutional seats, from the sheriff to the mayor to, as you said, tax collector, uh, supervisor of elections, property appraiser, uh, they haven't been voting that way. What do you, what's your plan to kind of overcome that hurdle? I think it's education. It's what, what I do best, meeting and greeting with the people, um, explaining to them, I, I will tell you, Fred, a lot of people, when I'm out talking, you would be surprised at the number of people who are excited that I chose to do this, but they're like, what do you do? You know, what do you do? And so you have to, you have to, to do this whole educational component of yes, on city council, I help make the re millage rate. 
when you go to the property appraiser's office, this is the office that assesses the value of all of the commercial and residential parcels. You know, we have 385,000 commercial and residential parcels here in Duval County. So it's a massive job. And then, you know, you I have to let them know that once um, we assess the value uh, and deduct your exemptions and things like that, then that is sent over to the tax collector's office who you write the check to. Mm. And so it has been massive when it comes to the educational component. But I think that that's good because I think it now puts this this particular constitutional office out in the public. Whereas before it really wasn't out there. It was just, it was just something you went into the booth and you just chose somebody. Mm. Now there's more information about it. You know, if you go to my website, you'll see lots of information about the property appraiser's office, you know, other things that are related to that. So I think it's going to elevate just the office in, in general, just because I'm in, in the race. Now, do you have to tackle, do you have to uh, continue to deal with zo is zoning issues come under uh, under the helm of that office? No, just assessing the property, <laughs> the value. It's, 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 it's very succinct okay. in what they do. Right. So you don't have to sit. You don't have to sit through any of those long, long hearings. Uh, with no, that. I'll have some other ones though. <laughs> I'll have others. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll look forward to to that. Um, uh, I, I I wish you well with that. The, uh, we've uh, of course you. known each other for a few years now, and um, I'm just happy to see that you served well in the, in city council and um and and in life and you've done quite well with it and we'll look forward to uh, to seeing you prosper uh in the coming in the coming year and then in the next uh, next month or so with that um Joyce has been a pleasure well, thank you Fred mm -hmm. I, I I just want to um end by just reminding folks again this is about education and making sure that everybody is well aware of what's going on. And so, again, if you could just uh, uh, direct them to my website, just so they can see what we're talking about is www.vote, the number four, JoyceMorgan.com, just to see what's going on out there and, and just educate, educating yourself before you even go to the polls. 